Data cleaning is a skill that all data analysts require and is essential for making data as easy to aggregate and analyze as possible. In this video, I'm going to give you 10 quick fire tips for cleaning data in Excel in under 10 minutes. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to Learn BI Online with me, Adam Finer, helping you do more with data. Without any further ado, tip number one. Not so much a data cleaning tip, but a useful first step to take before you start carrying out the cleaning work. You're going to want to make a copy of the sheet containing the data you want to clean. It's always helpful to have the original data as a reference if you make changes and then you're not sure whether the changes you applied have done what you set out to do. So as a rule of thumb, this should be the absolute first thing you do. The next thing you should do is to remove any duplicate rows from your data. Now, you should only do this if you're certain that duplicate rows shouldn't exist in the data source. If you're not sure, then you should definitely check with whoever might know before you do this. However, if there's a row identifier in the data, this should tell you that duplicates shouldn't be allowed. To remove duplicates in Excel is very simple indeed. Just go to the Data tab and hit Remove Duplicates. Voila! If I were you, at this stage, I'd recommend making another copy of this deduped data in another sheet and working off this going forward. Just in case, better safe than sorry. Another thing you're going to want to do is to remove any blank rows from the data. I've seen other tutorials where they remove entire rows because of blank values in just some cells of the row. But this isn't, at least to me, something you're going to want to do very often. You really need to remove rows that are completely blank and contain no values at all. Unfortunately, the only way I know to do this is by using filters. So you select all of the data you want to filter and hit the filter button. And this should add a filter to all columns. Then you need to apply a filter of blanks to each column in turn. Then you simply select the rows, right click and delete. When data is being copied into Excel from different sources, this can sometimes lead to blank spaces being added to cell values. Leading blank spaces before a value are obvious when you look at the data, but values with trailing spaces look identical to those without. Normally, just by glancing at the data in a specific column, you'll be able to tell if it contains values with blank spaces that will need removing. If so, first insert a new blank column to the right, and in this column use the Trim function. Trim will not only remove leading and trailing spaces, but also those extra spaces in the middle of the cell value. So equals Trim, and the cell you need to remove the blank values from in between parentheses. After you hit enter, just hover your cursor over the bottom right corner of the cell until you see the cross turn black and then double click. This will fill down the entire column with the same formula and apply the trim to all the values in it. A lot of the time you'll receive an Excel file that contains data that's been either manually inputted by different people or copied from different systems. This means that, especially when it comes to people's names, you'll get different versions in terms of capitalization. Some will appear all uppercase, some all lowercase, and some properly capitalized. You're going to want to make all of these values uniform. The version you choose is up to you, but I'd recommend capitalizing the first letter of both first and last names. To do this, you can use the proper function. So again, insert a blank column and type equals proper, and the cell you want to capitalize in parentheses. And again, double click on the bottom right of the cell to fill down. If, however, you did want to make all values upper or lowercase, just replace the proper function with either the upper or lower functions. I'm just going to jump in here quickly to say that if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. OK, back to the video. If you have first and last names in the same cell and you'd like to separate them into two separate columns, you can simply use Excel's powerful flash fill function. Insert your blank column and in it, just type out the first name for the first couple of rows. Then in the third row, just hit the flash fill button in the data tab. Excel's AI will guess what you're trying to do and fill the remaining rows with what it thinks you're looking for. 
In fact, this flash fill can be used with any other similar thing that you're trying to achieve. So for example, with this product ID, I can just copy and paste the number element of the ID. Then with even only one value to work with, the flash fill button will do the rest. It's such a great tool and makes cleaning data so quick. Sometimes when you receive Excel data, it will contain percentages as whole integers instead of decimal values. If you're going to want to use these numbers as real percentages for calculations, you'll need to transform them into decimal numbers and divide them by 100. The simplest way to do this is just to insert a blank column and type equals cell divided by 100 and then fill down as I showed you before. Dates can have a multitude of different formats and one date in one part of the world means something completely different in a different part of the world. Because of this, I always recommend you to transform any date fields into a format that is globally recognized and one that's used in SQL databases. It is the ISO 8601 format of year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, day, day. In order to turn all of your dates into this format, just select the column, go to Format, Cells, Date, and select it here. Trust me, you'll thank me later. The best way to see whether values you expect to be numbers are actually being recognized as numbers in your Excel file is by looking at the alignment of the cell values. They should be aligned to the right. So if they're aligned to the left, it means they're probably not being recognized as numbers. Another way to verify this is to select the column and check that there is a sum of values being displayed. If you only see a count of values, this means they're not recognized as numbers. To fix this, you can first try selecting the column and going to Format, Cells, Number, and selecting the number of decimal places you need. And if this isn't fixing the problem, you could use this neat trick. Select any blank cell and do Copy. Then highlight the column you want to apply a number format to, then Edit, Paste, Special, and Add. Voila! The final tip is to remove any currency symbols you have in metric value columns. Now, if you're going to be exporting Excel to CSV and then maybe importing that into, say, a SQL database, this shouldn't be a problem because CSV files are text files, so only the actual value you see here in the cell will be exported. However, with other tools, this may not be the case, and the symbol may be exported as well. To be on the safe side, I'd recommend removing it. To do this, again, just go to Format Cells and then choose Number. It may also be that the currency symbol is actually baked into the cell. In this case, the values should be aligned to the left like text, so it's easy to spot. But might as well check that the symbol doesn't appear in the formula bar. If it does, just insert a blank column, enter the number without the currency symbol and use the flash fill option. So once you're done cleaning your data, you're going to want to replace the old uncleaned columns with the new cleaned ones. When you've used functions like trim and proper, you're going to first want to select the new column and then copy, paste special, values. This will replace the formula with the value that the formula created. Do make sure to delete the old columns. If you found this video useful and you'd like to learn more about working with data in Excel, why not check out this playlist here? Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon for another video. Until then, stay BI curious.